Jekyll and Hyde, uh, the new tea time drama uh, <laughs> from. Well, that's what they described because obviously I went to the screening, Gary. If you want to do been yes. to another screening, yeah, Matt's been to another screening. Yeah, <laughs> that's not the, the jingle. Go on, Luke. I forget what it is. That's why it just I had goes to do up. It, like that. it just got Matt's going to another screening. That's it. Oh. Right. Oh. Um, I love and jingles. At the screening, they described it as a weekend TV tea time drama. Mm. And at the screening, there was a lot of concerns about the the content of it. Basically, the plot is that Jekyll's grandson has grown up unaware of his background. He lives in Sri Lanka with the adopted family and then he there's a event which leads him back to London and back to his sort of split persona and by and by he learns more and more about himself. There was a lot of sort of ghoulishness in this. A lot of silliness I think as well and I think it was well paced between the between the action and the sort of exposition and the bit of comedy that Christian McKay provided. I think, personally, and this isn't a, yeah, a decision, a point of view that a lot of people it's not have even got. A se- it's not even a it, sentence yet. Let's get there. <laughs> this isn't a point of view it, that a lot of people have got, is that I don't think it is on at the wrong time for kid, well, some kids to watch, because, Gary, we had this discussion when we were talking about Doctor Who. And this, to oh, me, don't is don't start the, this again. You nearly is, fell out over this. This is this to me is the kids hiding behind the sofa. Yeah. Thing, I think <laughs> this has got that that Doctor Who. I think where where my comparison between the two is that they both got those scary moments, but I think Doctor Who now has a lot more intricate dialogue that yeah. younger children won't <clears throat> understand as much. Whereas I think Jekyll and Hyde had those scary moments but all the in you know the exchanges between the characters were basic enough for i think a more I mean, the, diverse the, audience to understand the the irony is doctor who is now firmly positioned at sort of 8 eight thirty, whereas this is now i mean they're moving it to seven o'clock but, uh, but next week uh, but my, i mean my, I, I, my I, point I, is I, I, well, I would say does it matter because it's all at no. the end of the day it's all before the watershed anything I, before I, nine I, is before nine it doesn't I, matter I, where before that's nine. That's my is. favourite quote of the whole part. Everything but anything before nine is before nine. Best yeah. thing you've ever said. I just think Sunday evening is kind of family viewing time, and therefore, if you know your children are going to be easily scared, yeah. then don't want mm. let them watch yeah. them. You, the, I mean, the trailers you know, were. They, it was quite heavily trailered, and you could easily read some of the reviews said, you know, younger yeah. children probably won't be able to deal with this. I don't think there was that much in it. The only thing I can think uh, there were two things. There was the Jekyll stepping on the little girl's neck at the beginning. Yeah. And then there was the Harbinger creature. I mean, I enjoyed it. I think Charlie Higson just needs to forget about writing comedy into his drama so much. There were too many moments of camp. I thought I, I thought I, the I, comedy was well proportioned to no, the, I, the... The fight the, scenes didn't need the Batman-style stuff. And it was, it, it wasn't it was, complicated it was, at all, really. No, that's, that no, was my point, whereas yeah. I think Doctor yeah. Who is a bit more complicated now. Yeah. Well, doesn't Doctor Who take itself rather seriously now? Mm. I mean, I'm and not one to talk. And this didn't at all. And I think this no, is I the thing that... with Charlie Higson is that they wanted their brief was something that was, but you know, something that was action packed, that had a bit of comedy, that had a bit of drama, that was very British. And I think it takes all those. I mean, Richard boxes. E. Grant was very good in it. I thought mm. it was, I thought he was great, and also the guy that played the the, the guy that killed his parents. I don't know his name, but. He the was parent. in uh, Mr. Strange as well, wasn't he? He was, He's yeah. Enzo Silente or something like that. And and he had a great part, sort of like an evil evil mm. dictator villain. Yeah, again, like... very over the top. But I, yeah, I think, but I, I don't yeah, mind that in my villain. Certainly promising, and certainly in a year where ITV has given us absolute drivel, mm. I think it's See, this, this is, to me, one of their biggest sort of successes of the year. If... We should mention the fact that there have been 800 complaints to Ofcom. No more than 2,000. Isn't it? Oh, I read, or was it 200? Thought, well, I read 800 total somewhere. So, I mean, obviously, oh, OK, right. let's go with lots of complaints. Uh, I know we complain a lot about telly, but have you, have any, have, have you Gary, or... I 800, I don't know, you right, are but, right, Gary. But have you, have you, Gary, ever been felt compelled to nearly no. write a letter? Or I, there's write. this thing called the remote control, and if I don't like what I'm watching, I turn Exactly. What is wrong with people? Why I've can't never just... understood why people... It's like, why do people ring into radio shows to complain about what they're hearing? You know, it's hmm. find another radio station. You know, if you, don't, yeah. if you don't like Jekyll and Hyde, don't watch it. 
exactly. if, if you've truly got a beef, I mean, I can understand in the years gone by when there was only two channels that maybe, yeah, you mm. complained, but now, uh, sorry.